So Ben Shapiro, um, he spoke about Hassan Piker because there was a, a Twitch leak of the amount of money that different streamers are making. And suffice to say, uh, Hassan Piker is <laughs> absolutely killing it. Uh, I was I was stunned and floored at the amount of money he's making. And I'd be lying to you guys if I said I wasn't like, damn, Twitch, it's like that. I didn't know it was like that. And people have been telling me for a long time I should get on Twitch. I don't know. I think I'm a little bit too much of a boomer and a grandpa um, to get on Twitch. I don't know if I'm uh, cool enough for the cool kids over there on Twitch. But Hassan Piker is, I think, the number two streamer on Twitch. So when I look at that, I think, well, of course he's going to be making a lot of money. Again, I didn't know the extent to which, like, I didn't know how much it was going to be, but I knew he was going to make a lot of money. But anyway, um, with this leak that gave all of their uh, income, right-wingers seized on this and flipped out because you have plenty of people pushing left-wing content who are basically rolling in dough. So this fact came across Ben Shapiro's radar, and here's the hilarity that ensued. That is a truism of politics that hypocrisy is always newsworthy. Hypocrisy is always newsworthy. If somebody is a religious Christian and then they have an affair, this is a newsworthy event, according to the media. If there's a politician who's right wing, that politician turns out to be gay. Really, really newsworthy, according to the media. But there's one area of hypocrisy that is just not newsworthy to the media, like truly not newsworthy. And that, of course, is if you are a socialist who's extremely wealthy and gives very little charity. If you are that person, then hypocrisy just doesn't play a part. Hypocrisy is never a problem because after all, you're calling for societal change. You yourself don't have to abide by any of those rules because some animals are more equal than other animals. But the socialist has the benefit of the bargain because you get to be as socialist as you want to, like Bernie Sanders, and then you get to have a lake house. You get to be a millionaire while proclaiming that billionaires aren't paying the flesh up. Okay, so this issue has become relevant over the course of the past couple of days because a guy named Hassan Piker, who I believe used to be a Young Turks guy, I don't really know that much about him, he apparently is a socialist Twitch streamer. There's a big article, a big glowing profile about him in New York Magazine titled Streaming with Hassan Piker, the AOC of Twitch. I'm a political commentator with like stands. Okay, well, in the past few months, Hassan Piker, it turns out, has been revealed to be a very wealthy person, which is good for him. He has a lot of folks who are following him over at Twitch. That is his, uh, that is his prerogative, and I'm, I'm glad for him that he's been able to build a following. But a couple of times in the last month, it's been revealed that this out-and-out -out socialist, I mean, this is what he calls himself, that he is um, a very wealthy man. Quote, Hassan Piker was in a rage. A million tabs were pinched together like sardines at the top of his browser. His jittery cursor bounced between them, summoning Newswork, Network News, Chiron's YouTube brands, viral tweets, and TikTok memes. The day's trending topic, Piker, who is 30, had purchased a $2.7 million house in West Hollywood. An ordinary Twitch streamer's housing wouldn't make headlines, but over the past five years, Piker has become one of the most prominent socialist pundits in America. The controversy about the purchase had made it to Fox News and Breitbart, and Piker was prepared to take on the interlopers who logged on to see the fireworks. Quote, the only reason my house is expensive is because of the area I live in, he growled. Are you guys really that stupid? Um, that doesn't, that's not even a response to the charge. The charge is that for a socialist, you seem to be spending large, my friend. It doesn't matter, like, you could have, there are a lot of places that are not in West Hollywood that don't cost $2.7 million. They're all over the United States. You can get yourself a tiny little shack and live yourself the Henry David Thoreau lifestyle for probably 30 grand somewhere. 2.7 million bucks, a lot of money. I don't see you handing that out to all of the immiserated workers in the Marxist social construct, right? That's the charge. And his response is, well, of course it's expensive around here. This is West Hollywood, which of course is not a response. Piker said three weeks later, quote, as long as you don't defang your core values, as long as you're still speaking truth to power, then F them. Yeah, speaking truth to power is being the guy who buys the $3 million house and does interviews with New York Magazine and then jabbers about how the rich don't pay their fair share. Because I don't give a bleep. I'm doing this in the least exploitative way you functionally effing can. Really? He says, it's my labor. I'm the one who's streaming for 10 hours. Welcome to capitalism, my dude. It's my labor? Yes, whose labor? So, in other words, you bet on yourself, you've done really well, and you believe that you deserve to keep the proceeds of that labor. 
it's hilarious that he said that at the end. He goes, a worker is entitled to the fruits of his own labor. And then he says, welcome to capitalism. Actually, it's the exact opposite. The surplus value is extracted by the owner, by the boss, by whoever runs the company. That would be capitalism. So in other words, think of a business as a rigid hierarchy. Think of a business as essentially a dictatorship or a tyranny. You have the owner of the business who's at the top, and then they have like usually a manager underneath them, and then they have the workers underneath them. And the whole point is, whatever the person at the top says, goes. So no, if you're a worker, if you're at the bottom of that equation, you are most certainly not entitled to the fruits of your own labor. Not at all. In fact, there's been a giant decoupling in the United States. We've shown you the charts, we've shown you the graphs of worker productivity versus how much money the workers are making. So they're producing way more than they get. So that would be capitalism. That'd be the problem with capitalism. And so, Hassan, you know, Hassan Piker's point is, well, a worker is entitled to the fruits of his own labor. That's what he says. And if Ben Shapiro believed that, he'd be a lot further left on the political spectrum. Now, again, on the, so to Hassan Piker and how much money he makes. Hassan is correct. He does all the streaming. I don't know if he has any employees. He may, he may not. I really don't know. If he does have employees, I'm sure he pays them well. If he doesn't, and it's literally all him, then his argument is, yeah, I, I mean, I, I do all of it. So what do you want me to do? I, I don't understand, like, what the argument is. I happen to do well when I'm advocating for these ideas that I advocate for. Here's the thing. If he, if that was the case, and he did not argue for raising taxes on the rich, I would be against him. And I'd be saying... That's messed up. And that's not right because he's making so much money and he has to pay his fair share. But the fact of the matter is Hassan Piker says Hassan Piker makes too much money and should pay higher taxes. So having said that, I don't see what the problem is. He happened to make a lot of money by advocating left wing ideas. And he also holds true to those principles and says, raise my damn taxes. I will go out there on my stream and advocate 10 hours a day for you to raise taxes on me. So what exactly is the problem here? What exactly is the charge here? It's not like he made the money and then all of a sudden he went from saying, raise my taxes to now, no, I think I should get a tax cut or you should keep my taxes exactly the same. That would be a problem. That would be hypocrisy. That would be, I just crossed the bridge and I'm going to burn it behind me. He didn't do that. He didn't say that. So I, mean, I don't understand the issue here. Um, they think it's like hypocrisy to be on the left and, and make a lot of money. But Stop and think about that. These guys call you a loser if you make no money. So they attack you if you make no money. And then if you make a lot of money, they call you a hypocrite. So it's almost like they're going to attack you no matter what. Like they're working backwards from their conclusion. And this is exactly like the Bernie discourse when we learned Bernie has three houses and every idiot and their mother, mother went after him and said, this is unacceptable. Then of course you read into the situation and you found out he lives in a very solidly middle class home uh, in Vermont. And then he's got a place in DC because he's in DC half the year because he's a Senator. And then they inherited from like Jane's parents or something, this tiny, you know, relatively small house on a lake that was some vacation home again, inherited it. So, and, and by the way, he's literally the most popular Senator in the country. And he happened to write a book that was a bestseller. So his net worth is a little over a million dollars. I mean, the dude has been in Washington DC since 1784. I'm surprised he didn't trip over his own dick and make a hundred million dollars. Never mind making one million dollars. So, again, uh, what's the issue here? Bernie Sanders wants to raise Bernie Sanders' taxes. Hassan Piker wants to raise Hassan Piker's taxes. They want to redistribute that wealth and give it back to the working class in the form of, you know, free college and and universal pre-K and uh, Medicare for all. So, what what exactly is the issue here? What exactly is the charge here? There is no charge. There is no charge. What Ben Shapiro wants to do is go out there and say. Leftism equals ha ha, live in a mud hut, live in a shed and wear a barrel, walk around wearing, you know, hand me down clothes from six generations ago. That's not what leftism is. Nobody ever said that's what leftism is. This isn't a serious analysis. This is like when uh, people went after Jimmy Dore for having a big house. And since Jimmy Dore has a big house, therefore forced the vote is wrong. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. I, I don't understand where these arguments come from. Um, and then, by the way, to people who would make the point, um, you should probably give a, a lot to charity if you have that much money. Now, I don't. I have no idea how much money Hassan Piker gives to charity. Maybe he does give a lot to charity. I genuinely have no idea. 
However, having said that, there's a reason why people are hesitant oftentimes to give to charities after they've made a lot of money. A lot of charities are just flat out scams. And I hate to break it to you, a, a lot of like foundations and nonprofits and charities, it's literally just one giant tax avoidance scheme. And anybody who's made money knows, because that's the first thing that, you know, accountants and experts and, and lawyers and specialists tell you is that, well, if you do this thing, that it appears like it's charity and you're helping people, but really the whole point is we're going to get you a lower tax rate. So, uh, you know, that's that's the game, the way the game is really played. And that's why when you see these celebrities or you see these athletes like I have a new foundation that I want to show you, that's all a tax avoidance scheme. And so I'm not even sure that point is a very solid point when you say, well, you should give uh, a lot of the money back in in charity. Now, don't get me wrong. If you find a charity that you fully trust and you know where the money's going and you know it's doing good, then in that instance, by all means, give give away as much as humanly possible to that charity. And and that would be a wonderful thing. But by and large, a lot of the charities out there are giant scams. And sometimes it's 70, 80, 90 percent of the money is not going to the thing that they say it's going towards. And again, the foundations and stuff, a lot of them are tax avoidance schemes. So I don't really see the issue here with the Hassan Piker thing. Again, don't get me wrong. I would tax the shit out of Hassan Piker, but Hassan Piker would tax the shit out of Hassan Piker. And so given that that's the case, I don't see what the issue is here. But Ben Shapiro and a lot of people on the right love to point at this and go, ha ha, hypocrisy, because leftist makes a lot of money. Uh, if he made none or he made very little, they turn around and say, ha ha, uh, leftist loser can't make any money. So they're going to attack him no matter what. It's just they feel like they found an area where he's ripe for attack. Don't buy into the nonsense.